Hey, welcome to the channel. I'm Mr. Jackie Ma, and today I'm gonna to be doing a review for you. Okay, so I'm gonna be reviewing the Conklin Duraflex, or well, the Conklin Duraflex uh, <laughs> Limited Edition, right? Uh, this is a Goulet exclusive, right? And I was actually fortunately enough to be one of the uh, people who bought it, you know, in the first couple of hours, right? So with that, uh, I'm gonna get straight into the pen, right? So actually, before I say that, uh, <laughs> It's a preface. So my channel right now is uh, not really about pens, but uh, yeah, I just figured I'd do this review for you, whoever might be interested in watching, right? You can check out my other videos too, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a review, a comparison, and some other really, really cool stuff, okay? So with that, I'll talk to you guys in the next clip. Okay, so this is the box, the Duraflex Limited Edition, right? It's with the OmniFlex nib. So I definitely, you know, think this is a pretty cool looking pen. Right now. Why? Um, so I got number 41. There's 1898. I'm actually not, I don't think Goulet had all 1898 that were uh, there that got sold out. But uh, yeah, so this is the outer sleeve, right? It's just, you know, a sleeve. And it comes with this little coffin like box, right? So, um, I'm sure if you've ever seen any other reviews, you know, the box is kind of cool. It's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, it's just like any other pen. Oops, sorry, trying to <laughs> do this with two hands. But um, yeah, no, it's really nice. The pen just came nice and snug in here and it feels kind of cool. But, uh, and it came with some other cards. If you want to pause and read that, if you, you know, really want to. But uh, yeah, let's get more into the pen, right? So the thing you guys came to watch this video for. So with that, uh, let's go there. Okay, so just right off the bat, I'm gonna say I'm a little disappointed, right? But before I tell you exactly what I'm disappointed about, let me tell you a little more about the pen, right? So the Duraflex, right, is supposed to be Conklin's attempt at uh, a flex nib, right? But they used a model called their Duragraph, right? So the pen shape, the, you know, style and everything um, is based off of their Duragraph model, right? So. I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. I was actually really surprised by the size of this. I was actually expecting, I'm not, I'm not really sure why, but I was expecting a much smaller pen, right? So it was actually really pleasantly surprising when I found out that, you know, it's as big as it is, right? It's, it's actually, you know, quite a big pen, um, I guess, you know, relative to other pens, right? And, you know, I think it just looks super, super cool, right? It's like, has this blacked out look, right? The nib looks super cool. The pen itself looks really nice, and I think the accents, right? It's like rose gold accents, makes it look, you know, very, very elegant, very nice, right? But uh, let me show you more about what, come in, what came into the box, then I'll talk to you guys about what I like about the pen, what I don't like about the pen, very SBRE brown style. And uh, not only that, but I'm gonna give you guys a comparison with a Palette Falcon and a modified Conrad, right? Uh, not a modified Newler's pen, okay? So with that, guys, uh, I'll show you guys in the next clip. <laughs> okay, so what I like about the pen, right? So the Conklin Duraflex is actually, you know, like I mentioned earlier, it's a really nice looking pen. I really enjoy how the pen looks. I really enjoy how the pen feels, right? Um, in the sense, how it feels in my hand, right? So, you know, it's, it's a nice, like, big pen, right, uh, like, size-wise. It feels really big, but it's nice and light, right? So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel like you have to put it down and, and you know, stuff like that, right? Um, but, you know, I'm not sure how many of you guys, like, if that matters to you that much. But, uh, you know, honestly, I just think it's a really cool-looking pen. And that's probably one of my favorite parts about it. And just, like, how it fits in my hands, how it feels. So, you know, I really like those aspects of this pen, right? It's definitely something that... Uh, is different than what I usually get, so I'm really digging this pen, you know? And it has like a nice, cool little Conklin, oh, let's see if they can focus there. Conklin, oh, you guys can kind of see that. A uh, little Conklin thing on the top, ever since 1898, right? The clip, uh, like I said earlier, well, the clip is actually really tight. Uh, well, let me get into that later, what, about, what I don't like about it, right? Um, but it looks really cool right here. Oh, man. Okay, let me see if you guys can see that. Um, it's kind of hard to see right here, but, you know, it says Conklin right there, and right here it says Duragraph with little crescents around it. Um, really small detail, it's pretty cool. And then right on the middle of the body, it says Duraflex, limited edition, and it says which number you got. So I have number 41, right? So that's pretty cool. And it has this nice little, uh, little metal 
ring there too and this side it's just like flat too but it's um i don't know man i really like how this looks it's like simple but elegant right and it's nice and big but it's like i don't know i i, I like this a lot uh, how it looks anyways um and another thing i really like about this is that it has a converter filling pen or it's it's a converter filling mechanism so you don't know what oh, my goodness okay i'm stumbling too much here let me get the pen out and i will show you guys what i mean okay so like I said earlier, I took pen, I took apart the pen, and uh, oh, I also really like the nib. The nib just looks super, super cool. It even has like a heart-shaped little thing right there. And uh, yeah, the grip section is also nice and big. It's like a lot of space for my fingers, right? It's I don't I don't feel uncomfortable at all when I'm holding it. And uh, yeah, I you know really like the size of this pen, right? But uh, yeah, the converter is another cool thing, right? So personally, I. Um, you know, really like converters or like cartridge converters because, you know, they're easy to clean out. They hold, you know, relatively small amounts of ink or not relatively. I mean, it will take me a while to finish this, like the full thing, right? Um, and that's mainly because, you know, I don't write that much and I have a good amount of pens I like to cycle through. So it's kind of nice to be able to, you know, very quickly clean it out, right? But uh, what I really like about this converter and uh, if you ever have any other Monteverdi type pens, these converters like screw into this nib, into this new uh, nib unit. So it's, you know, extra secure. It's really nice. Actually, funny story. One of my first pens I've ever gotten, right? I think it was like the second time or third time I was refilling it. It's a, uh, it was like a cheap Jinhao pen, right? Um, you know, I really, I loved it a lot, but uh, the crazy thing was that it's, you know, while I was refilling it, it just like com completely detached from the converter as I was filling it. And, uh, you know, I had to go fish for the bottle of, <laughs> I had to fish for like the nib section and the nib and everything like, you know, in the bottle, man. And it was like, it kind of sucked. I wasted a bunch of ink. It was like, just like a bad experience, right? So I actually really appreciate this, you know, screw type converters, right? And it just, it looks really nice. It's, it's elegant. It's like, does its job, right? And Oh, another thing too, I really like changing my inks, so maybe that's another reason why I like cartridge converters, right? So, with that, uh, I'm gonna talk to you guys more about what I don't like about the pen and um, some other cool things that, you know, Goulet or Conklin might not necessarily uh, advertise, okay? So with that, uh, let's go on to there. Okay guys, so now about what I don't like about the pen, right? And one of them is not too minor, and another thing might be a deal breaker, but uh, for me, um, I almost kind of anticipated these things happening, and uh, you know, there's ways to resolve around it, right, to go around it. But uh, one of the things, right, we'll start with the lesser of things, um, you know, I would really like this pen if, well, for one, the clip is really, really tight, right? Um, I was able to do a little thing where you can make it a little looser, right, um, just barely, so that, you know, it's a pretty like good tightness right but uh you know just straight out of the factory right uh just straight out of the box it was very very like almost unusably tight right um and you know i like I mean, it looks cool but i would have really liked this pen right if it came with the little rocker thing that comes in like the, some other conklin pens right i think that clip looks super cool that one looks super functional right but uh yeah you know not a super huge complaint, right? Because uh, for this, you know, for this nib, all you have to do to make it looser, right, is uh, you get a piece of paper, like, you know, some relatively firm paper or some plastic or something. Probably one of those cardboard things that uh, comes into the Goulet, that comes with like a Goulet packaging, right? Or like maybe even this, right? All you have to do is like, you know, slide it in. Or well, of course you would use two hands, get this slid in, right? And then all you would have to do is uh, kind of pull it up, right? And just kind of stretch it up with the paper, with the whatever else you're using. And that should, you know, make the clip a lot, you know, usable, a lot more usable. It'll make it looser for sure. So that's something you definitely want to, it's definitely something you want to be very slow and deliberate about, right? You don't want to overdo it right away. And, uh, you know, it's it's a relatively easy fix, right? So, you know, you can, you can do that and, uh, Hopefully that was a helpful tip if you, you know, don't like the clip. You know, you're able to do this on basically any pen that has a, you know, a stupidly tight clip. And uh, yeah, it's an easy, easy fix, okay? So enough about the clip, right? So what I didn't like about the pen that was like really disappointing might be a deal breaker for you. Um, 
But for me, um, so, ooh, my glass is kind of dirty. But uh, this is the writing that I did, right, when I first got it, right? So I'm doing like a writing challenge. And uh, this was, as you can see, February 26, 2018. Right, so I inked it up freshly with Apache Sunset. Uh, well, I actually cleaned it, you know. I was actually, I cleaned it, I put a bunch of like silicone greases on all the appropriate spots, right? And I uh, flushed it out, and then, then I inked it up with Apache Sunset. But then when I finally started writing with it, it was, I was kind of bummed out, right? So when I first started writing with it, um, as you guys can tell, it did not write right away. So this says, well, that's supposed to say February 26, 2018, right? So I got this pen yesterday. I spent a good amount of time using it, um, fixing it, and doing stuff like that, right? But uh, for mine, for my pen specifically, number 41, um, the times were too tight, right? So as you guys can see here, I was, uh, as you can tell by my writing, I was a little disappointed, right? So I was able to tell the times were too tight because when I flexed it out, um, you know, it would write, so, you know, Disappointed. Oh my goodness. I was a little disappointed, not gonna lie. But uh, yeah, at first I tried opening... Well, actually, before I go into that, uh, let me tell you guys that everything I'm doing here, right, is uh, kind of like at your own risk. I don't think, you know, this any of the stuff I'm telling you right now would be like, you know, under warranty or whatever else, right? So just like a quick disclaimer there, do all of this at your own risk, right? So, you know, for me, if I really wanted to do this like the right way, what I should have done, is I should have just like contacted Conklin or contacted Goulet and told them about my pen I didn't write, right? But uh, you know, I was impatient and you know, I kind of have some experience with this before so I just figured I would do it myself, right? Um, so yeah, let me go into explaining more about that, right? But let's, this clip is getting long so uh, let me do that in another clip, okay? So. Okay, so we're back almost in the exact same spots, right? But uh, what I did to try to resolve this was uh, I tried to use brass sheets, right? I basically tried to open up the tines, right? So I basically stuck in two brass sheets, right, into the nib. Uh, you guys can probably find some YouTube videos on how to do that, right? And then I, you know, tried doing a couple of things and then I, you know, inserted some papers, some little cardstock to kind of widen the times a little bit, right? And uh, so I did that with these brass sheets you guys can get from here or from wherever else, right? And uh, yeah, so it, it kind of helps, you know, I was doing that, you know, I was trying to do a little more, I was trying to do a little more. I kind of overdid it a little bit here, right? It got, you know, really, really thick, really dark. Um, but yeah, so I and then I did some things to try to tighten up the tines again, right? So again, this is why I'm saying that this might not um, be what you want to do if, you know, your pen isn't writing right away, right? But, uh, you know, I was comfortable enough to do this, right? I, I suggest you only do this if you're comfortable enough to do it. All right, um, oh, here's a Twiz B580 medium for comparison that I did there, right? Um, and this is kind of, I got it to like about here and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm satisfied with how that looks right now, right? That, that line thickness and, all that stuff, right? But uh, yeah, as you guys can imagine, right? It's, um, it's always disappointing, no matter the price point, when you get a pen that doesn't write, you know, right away, or there's something wrong with the nib or with whatever else, because you know that's the whole point of a pen, right? Is to write. So I mean, it's like almost buying a car that doesn't drive, right? Yeah, of course you can fix it. Of course you can do whatever else. But uh, I mean, I guess I don't know. It's almost uh, it's almost a shame because I like half expected it. I was like half preparing to. You know, understand that it wouldn't write right out of uh, right right away. But uh, man, I don't know, man. That's a uh, kind of sucky that you know we have to have that anticipation or that expectation. But uh, you know, like I said earlier, you know, it's not worth uh, or well, it's not worth you know crying about unless you're gonna you know do something about it. So I decided to you know instead of returning it, I decided to do it in my own hands, right? But uh, now. Let me go on to some cool things about the pen that Goulet and Conklin might not have told you about, okay? So, let's do a whole nother clip on that. Okay, so we're back, right? And what I wanted to share with you guys is that, uh, you know, so Conklin, right, is owned by Yaffa, which is the same company that owns Monteverde, right? So, what's pretty cool is that the nib units between the Monteverde pens and the Yaffa pens are interchangeable, right? So if I were to unscrew this 
and then, you know, not pull it out, but like unscrew it, I could unscrew it and put it onto this Monteverdi pen, right? So, I mean, likewise, it should work the same way, right? So if you have a Monteverdi nib that you really like or whatever else, right? Um, if you want to use like a stub nib or a Monteverdi or whatever, um, you could put it into this pen, which is pretty cool, right? Because then you just, um, you know, if you really like, you know, I, this is definitely something appealing to me because I really like the pen model and the nib was kind of, um, a little disappointing so it's kind of cool to know that I can switch this nib for other nibs that I like a lot more right and so with this Monteverdi nib I've actually been able to swap the Mon the stock Monteverdi nib with a couple of other cool nibs right so I've been able to switch it out for a modified noodlers nib right which I will show you guys later um, and I was able to switch it out for a um, you know number six size Bach titanium nib which is pretty cool. Um, so, you know, I was able to get a lot of functionality out of this pen because I was able to switch so many different nibs um, onto this, which is really cool. I really like this pen, right? The This is the Invincia Deluxe, right? And, you know, it's pretty cool. I actually don't think that... Uh, well, okay, so another thing that you guys should know before that is you could probably switch a lot of nibs and this nib unit into this pen and it shouldn't be a problem, but uh, switching this nib into another pen might cause you some problems just because this nib, if you guys can tell, is like a little bit longer, right? So the Duraflex nib, the Omniflex nib is, you know, longer. So that might or might not cause you a lot of problems. I was able to screw this on onto my Monteverdi and cap it and uh, I didn't seem to have any problems, right? But, uh, you know, do it at your own risk again and um, you know just a cool little hack for you guys um, and I actually have not tried taking out this nib and putting it onto another nib but uh, you know I, I'm pretty sure it should work right um, I don't think it would necessarily work very well with necessarily all number size six nibs because of the curvature of the nib right but you could always try it if you want <laughs> um, you know at your own risk you know not be at a uh, Mr. Jackie Ma's adver advising okay so that's really cool, right? That you could switch that. Um, and let me show you something else that's really, really cool, okay? So. Okay, so these are the three pens we'll be comparing, right? So we have the Pilot Falcon, right? In the soft fine, uh, right over there. Then we have the Duraflex nib right over here with the Omniflex nib, right? And we have the Noodler's Conrad, right? So this is the acrylic version. And uh, what's actually pretty cool is that this is not just a Noodler Con a Conrad nib, but it's a modified Noodler's Conrad nib. And uh, I'll explain more on how to, <laughs> about that and, you know, what's so cool about that. But, uh, okay, so I actually did some writing samples before. All right, so let's just go right over here. And, uh, yeah, so this is the Conklin Duraflex. It's pretty thick, right, or at least mine is, right, uh, versus the Pilot Falcon versus the Noodler's Acrylic Conrad, right? The modified one, okay. So I'm using um, diamond steel blue just so that all the um, all the inks were the same, right? And here are some more writing samples of the pens, right? So this top one right here, of course, is the Conklin Duraflex, right? This fine one in the middle is the Pilot Falcon, and the Noodler's Conrad is the one at the bottom, okay? So you know which one is for you, right? So that's probably the question that you might be asking or maybe it's like maybe you're trying to get a comparison right but uh, yeah i'm gonna give some my own input on some of these pens and you know i guess we could do that in another clip okay guys so this is um some more writing samples of how it looks right but uh, again i'm not sure if my pen is you know this writing is the best representation of how the nib will write out of the box because again i modified it to write like this uh, my experience writing out of the box was actually, you know, that it was really, really tight and it didn't really write um, unless you had to add like a good amount of pressure, right? So this is um, how it looks right now with uh, basically, you know, very little pressure. Um, and for some comparison, right, so that's the Omniflex, right, so the, in the Patrick Sunset. That's the Extra Fine Fabric Style Platinum 376. Um, some more Conklin Pilot Custom 74 with a fine um, Pilot Falcon. Right, steel blue, and then the Conrad. Ooh, I have some really exciting stuff to share with you guys there, right? And maybe that's what you guys have been waiting for. But uh, yeah, and then this is also, you know, some more of the writing. But uh, yeah, oh, also really quick, another thing I kind of noticed about this, it's not something I really like or dislike about the pen, but um, so here the pen is, is that 
the screwing, like the, the threads on the pen, um, they aren't like the smoothest, if that makes sense, right? So if you ever had like an Edison or like a Pelican, the threads on those are like really, really nice and like smooth, right? So for the Conklin pen, um, not exactly the smoothest, right? Not exactly something that uh, catches your attention right away. Um, it's not necessarily like bad, you know, but uh, I can only imagine that the threads get like a little smoother um, as you know, as I use it. So that's kind of what I'm expecting, but uh, you know, not super big, but I just figured I'd mention that real quick while I'm doing this video. Okay, so with that, let's go on to what you guys have been waiting for, right? So let's do the comparison between, you know, the different flex pens, right? So this Conklin, Duraflex, the Pilot Falcon, and a Noodler's Conrad, okay? So with that, ooh, I'm excited for this. Okay, let's go into that clip. Okay, so people might be most familiar with the Falcon, with the Pilot Falcon. Right, and as you guys know, the Falcon is, you know, it's not really, it's not advertised as a flex nib, right? But you can definitely get line variation out of it, right? Which is kind of cool. I actually really like this pen. It's, um, for how fine it is, it's really, really smooth, right? So again, this is the fine. It's actually kind of <laughs> a little harder, right? Because I'm like writing, um, this is like a glass table, right? And I'm trying to write under with this little thing right here. So the pen is actually getting like, touching the top of the nib, or the top in the top of the glass, so my apologies for that. But uh, yeah, this is the fine, I really like this, right? Um, for just, you know, regular writing sessions, right? Um, because, you know, it's reliable. It's like consistently, it, it's like a consistent writer and, you know, it's fine enough where it's like practical for almost like, any occasion, right? Um, what's cool about it is that even though it's still practical, it's very smooth, very fine, you know, when you want to, you can still have like a little bit of like, like flair, or I don't even know what that is, but uh, you know, <laughs> you guys can, you guys can, of course, I'm not sure if you guys can see how well you guys can see that variation, but, uh, ooh, my goodness, I promise guys, I usually write a little nicer, but uh, this glass thing, right? So that is the Pilot Falcon, right? So I didn't really flex anything here. And uh, yeah, let me just do some more of those little figure eight things that everyone likes to do, right? Um, and yeah, as you guys can see, it has like noticeable line of variation, right? Which, I mean, as far as like writing wise, it is pretty cool, right? And you know, the line variation is what makes it look nice, right? Um, or is like, I guess the appeal of flex, right? But uh, this is, again, a relatively soft nib, right? Ooh, let's, let's do it this way, there we go. So yeah, this is a relatively soft nib, right? So what I mean by that is that, you know, you can write something, you can flex, and then very quickly it will go back to like a, oh, okay, sorry, it's really hard to write with this class thing, but uh, it'll go back to a relatively fine line, okay? So with that, let's go on to the Omniflex nib, right? For the Conklin. So the reason I, you know, most people might be familiar with the Noodler's nib, but I'm saving that for last because it's a modified one. So I'm not sure too many people are familiar with that, right? But uh, yeah, let's go on to the Conklin nib. So again, it, it just, <laughs> it looks super duper cool. Right, but uh, yeah, if we just look at the normal I mean, you guys can tell right away, at least how I fixed it, right? Um, it's a lot darker than the Falcon, right? It's putting down a lot more ink. The Conklin, you know. Flex. Okay, so, I mean, it's not as bouncy, if that makes sense, right? Like, it's... I mean, you guys can see it, it does have line variation, right? Of course, it's like advertised too, actually. But uh, as you guys can see there, you know, it has a line variation. But, uh, you know, as far as the nib, it's not super bouncy in the sense that it like springs back right away. So if I were to do, um, say, like, a, I don't know, let's do like a big G or something. Right, so if I were to do something like, right, nice little, I guess unless I'm being like very deliberately slow about it or something, but um, yeah, I don't know, like, 
you know but it does feel very comfortable in my hand and you know I wouldn't like honestly I wouldn't mind riding with this nib um, just for the sake of you know like how it feels in my hands and you know the fact that I can switch other nibs with it oh actually the smoothness of this nib it's not like at least my nib anyways it's not the smoothest thing out there but um, you know it's it's pleasant though it's like it has like a good amount of drag but I feel like for flex nibs, that's kind of nice to have, right? So, I don't know, something, it's not like, yeah, again, it's not like the smoothest nib you'll ever write with. Um, but, you know, you, you can appreciate it, though, for what it is. Um, <laughs> assuming you get a writing nib, okay? But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, I like this pen a lot. Um, or I wanted to like it a lot, right? But, uh... You know, I'll do a conclusion <laughs> afterwards, but uh, yeah, so with that, let's move on to the Noodler's Conrad, right? So, here we have the Noodler's Conrad acrylic, right? So, I, I thought this is a really cool pen. I really like this pen a lot. So, this is a modified pen, right? So, what I mean by that is the nib. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can see that too well, but uh, I actually used a Dremel to carve in the sides of the nib, right? So normally it would just go straight down, but I actually carved some little like indent into it, which is not too hard to do actually. And um, as you guys can see, I'm not sure if you guys saw in the Duraflex nib, but it almost kind of mimics that, right? And it, it like that, that's why it makes it so flexible, right? So here you guys can see the little indents that they, that they cut out of the nib, right? And you know, that is what gives it, oh my goodness, don't want my pencil to fall off, but uh, that's what gives it its like flexibility, right? Or like, you know, a big part of it. So the Noodler's Flex Nib, of course, you know, um, has a good amount of flex like already, but uh, what this modification does is that it makes it, you know, way more, like for one, way more softer, right? So you can flex out with using a lot less pressure. So I'm using like very little pressure here. Um, so, okay, there is, I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to write again because my pens are really long but yeah I actually really like this nib I really like what I did for this and you know it's a really easy thing to do okay so um, you know and if you were to write just regularly it you know writes a relatively fine line if you write with a little pressure right um, and of course it's gonna vary every time you do this because you know uh, every nib that you modify is not gonna be the same but it's you know it's a nice nib I really like this one a lot. And when you do this, it's pretty cool because you can put this into other pens, right? So I'm able to fit this into my Monteverde pen really easily, right? Um, so technically I should be able to put it onto the Conklin pen pretty easily too, right? But um, yeah, you know, this is really soft, really flexible, right? Again, not, not the smoothest nib, but uh, it's this is like probably my funnest nib, my funnest flex nib to play with because it writes, you know, super consistently. It's like very um well it writes really consistently it has you know you can flex out super you know really really easily and um it's just a really fun nib to play with right but uh, yeah so with that you actually have to use a i'm not sure if you can buy these anywhere right if you guys are interested maybe i can start uh making them and like sell them to you guys or whatever but uh yeah, so I actually have a Dremel 7000 or whatever else. This is actually not too much. Um, I think it was around $20 when I bought it or something like that. And, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. I mean, I, I use it only for pens, but uh, you could use it for basically anything. And um, this is pretty cool. I can, I'll put a link in this in the description along with some other things um, that you guys might like, right? So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So with this, I'm just going to do a final conclusion about what I think about each pen and, you know, if you know, these pens are for you, what I would use them for and stuff like that, okay? So I know this video is getting really, really long, but uh, bear with me guys, okay? So with that, I'll see you in the last clip or one of the last clips. Okay guys, so I really hope you enjoyed the comparison and the review of the pen, uh, what I had my thoughts and stuff that I had on this, right? But uh, yeah, let me just do some final conclusions on each one, right? So the Pilot Falcon, of course, is the most expensive one. Um, you guys can find the price on that for yourselves because I feel bad saying it. <laughs> um, and yeah, the Pilot Falcon, you know, it's a really, well, for one, it's a very well-designed pen, right? It has a gold nib, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the only thing though, it's, you know, it's not 
meant to be a flex nib, right? It's not meant to compete with other flex nibs, right? Um, so, you know, you definitely have to have your mindset around that. So, I mean, kind of putting this on here is like a little cheating because it's not really even meant to be a flex nib, right? But um, for the sake of having line variation, for the sake of, you know, flaring up your writing when you want to, um, this is a pretty cool pen. Um, not necessarily what I would recommend right away, especially, you know, if you're trying to get into flex, right? If you're trying to get into flex, I have, you know, other suggestions, but if you want a pen that has, you know, nice, you know, that's just like pretty sleek, very nice looking. If you like how it looks, if you like how it feels, I mean, it feels pretty nice in, in your hand actually too. Um, but if you just want like a pen, right? That looks like this, that can have some flex, then, you know, this might be a good choice for you, right? But I would not get this right away if you're looking for flex, okay? So now the Conklin Duraflex, right? Of course, you know, you guys heard my thoughts on it earlier. Um, so this is again a Goulet exclusive, right? And you know, this was like around 60 bucks, right? It has a flexible steel nib, right? Which is kind of cool. Um, very, you know, it's innovative in a lot of ways. And you know, for one, not to like bash on noodlers or any of the other flex nibs, but this is like a flex nib that like <laughs> looks cool, right? It's like blacked out, stuff like that, right? Um, so I don't know, I like that a lot. Um, and I guess for the pen, you know, as you know, one of my final conclusions about it is that, you know, I actually really like the pen a lot, right? I liked how it feels, I like how it looks. And, you know, that's probably a big reason why I like decided to, you know, I want to keep it, right? Or like why I got it in the first place, right? Um, so initially I was interested in the pen because of the Omniflex hype, right? So it's kind of funny. I got interested in the pen because of the um, like flex nib, right but uh, i'm actually keeping the pen because i like how it feels i like how it looks right and the nib was actually the most disappointing part right so i mean honestly if you are worried about that i would probably suggest maybe in your comment section like you know asking if goulet or whoever you buy it from like checks it out test it i'm sure they wouldn't mind doing it for you um i kind of wish i did too just because like you know it would just would have made the experience a lot better right i wouldn't have to spend so much time tinkering with it you know stuff like that but uh you know i'm okay with that i kind of expected that but uh yeah again i really like how this looks i like the flat top i like the big cap i like the big pen right and the nib is just like you know it looks really cool so who is this pen for right so this pen is for people i mean i would recommend getting this pen if you if you like how it looks right if you like the size well, as you can see, it's like a bit girthier than a lot of the other pens, right? Um, so that's, I don't know, that's pretty cool. I like that. If you like the aesthetics of it, if you like the aesthetics of it, if you like how it looks, um, and you want something that, you know, has like a medium-ish line, right, that could flex out, then I mean, I guess you could try this, right? If you're, if you're trying to get into flex, you know, maybe this might be a good pen. Um, assuming you like how it looks, right? I, like, again, I would not get this pen alone, um, just for the nib, right? I actually, you know, I would only get it if you also like how the pen looks, right? Um, because if you don't, then, you know, it might not be worth it to you. So, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, that's, like, my honest opinion about the Conklin pen, right? Um, I like it, but, you know, I definitely wished the, pe the nib wrote better stuff like that but yeah it has a lot of things going for it you know it looks really nice the cartridge converter is really solid um it's just like a sleek looking elegant pen right nice and comfortable and stuff like that right but um yeah so let's move on to the oh my goodness that sounded really, pretty funny but let's move on to the noodlers conrad acrylic right so the noodlers conrad acrylic is actually like around 40 bucks or something like that um and you know i actually really like the Noodler's Conrad pens just because, well, if you get the acrylic ones, they look super nice, right? But uh, they have some cool stuff going on. But it's like a piston filler pen um, with the flex nib, and the clip is like very functional, right? It's like the clip works. I don't know, it's just like these pens work, right? And you know, they're so cheap, or not, you know, relatively cheap compared to these, right? Because you could get, you know, one of these pens for like 20 bucks. Um, that, you know, it's okay if it doesn't write right away, right out of the box right away, but it almost always does, which is like kind of nice. Um, so honestly, if you're looking to get into Flux, right, um, or if you just like how these look, I would definitely recommend 
uh, a new Liz Conrad over the other ones if you're trying to get into flex. But uh, also, well, I mean, some caveats, right? But if you really want like a really fun, flexible experience and, uh, you know, stuff like that, right? To be able to write, you know, big, nice flourishes, you know, barely pressing down, I would actually consider investing in a Dremel 2, right? Um, or Dremel, I'm actually not sure how to say this, but uh, it's pretty cool, right? Because you can do this, right? This is probably like 20 bucks or something else. I'll probably put like a, put it somewhere right here, the price. And, uh, you know, if you were to get this, you get the nib here, right? The nib that comes with it, right? If you get the $20 version, right? Plus this, this is like 40 bucks, whatever else, right? Um, you can basically make your own super flexible nib, right? Which is really cool because, you know, not only, well, for one, the Conrad, I really like the shape of it. So, I don't know. I like this pen a lot, actually. But not only do you get like a super functional, like piston filling pen that uh, has a flex nib, stuff like that, you now basically have like a really soft flex nib that you could basically make over and over again, right? So I actually have some spare noodlers nibs that I could technically, if I really wanted to, you know, make them all as flexible as this one, right? So definitely, if you have the time, if you're willing to put in the effort to kind of like tinker around your, with, with that yourself, would definitely suggest getting one of these, getting one of these and, you know, figuring out, Googling, you know, however else, you could ask me even too if you want on how to basically do that. And then you'll end up with, you know, freaking nice, beautiful lines like that, right? Um, or nice line variation like that, right? Um, so definitely probably my favorite, my favorite pen to flex, right? This pen, I just kind of, I just like it, right? It's solid. And this pen is like the pe type of pen that you bring with you when you, you know, what do you have to take down serious notes, right? So if you're trying to take notes, you're trying to take an exam, you're going to work, whatever else, right? This is the type of pen I would bring because it's just reliable. It works, right? So the Conklin, I haven't had too much time with it. Um, so I can't really say as much as I have with these other two pens, but uh, this is the type of pen I'd probably use to write in my journal or something like that, to write what I'm grateful for, or, you know, to write letters, whatever else, um, could be fun. And this is the type of pen that, you know, I just like, you know, flex around like stuff like that. This is like the fun pen, right? Not necessarily the most practical all the time, but definitely super fun when you modify the nib, right? So honestly, so that's my opinion for these three pens, right? The comparisons, right? Um, but honestly, if you want like, if you really just want to go low budget um, and play with flex, then, you know, I would probably recommend getting into dip nibs. But uh, yeah, so again, my comparison between the Pilot Falcon, the Conklin Duraflex, and the Noodler's Conrad Acrylic, right, the modified version. And yeah, I hope you guys liked this video. I know this is really, really long, but uh, yeah, I hope you guys got some value out of this. And if you guys did, you know, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment if you like, if you wanna ask any questions um, I, that I missed here, or just anything that you guys wanna ask me, I'd, you know, I'd answer every comment that I get. So of course, you know, go ahead and ask, right? And again, yeah, I don't normally make pen videos, right? This is my first, you know, legit pen review, right? Well, I guess pen review plus comparison, which I guess probably should have been two different videos, but uh, yeah, you know, if you like these videos, uh, let me know, I'll make more of them. Um, if not, then, you know, check out my other videos if you don't like my pen videos and make sure to subscribe, like, and comment, all that good stuff, right? So again, this is getting really long, but if you, you know, basically stayed with me this far, then, you know, thank you. And I hope this was valuable to you, okay? So with that, I hope you have a beautiful day and I will see you soon.